talk again, which be the first principles. And then I see also when he says that be the oracles of God and I become. In other words, you were always like this. There was a time in all of our lives, and you think about it, even as members of the body of Christ. I think it may have any number of us remember the time when we first became members of the body of Christ. How we were fired up and excited in Christ Jesus. How we looked forward to coming in. How we didn't miss anything. We're excited about coming together. Didn't mind saying amen somebody. Didn't mind shouting hallelujah. Didn't mind getting happy in worship service. But you know if you go just long enough. Come on, come on. Every now and again I talk to the saints in Fort Wayne and I have to tell them sometimes church if I can just, can I just be real with you right now? Can I just be real with you? I think sometimes every now and again it's good to come to service with your blinders on. Oh, don't get quiet when I'm talking about that. <laughs> if you are familiar with what I'm saying, I'll show it to you like this. I was recently going someplace and a couple of big Clydesdales came past me pulling a car. Mm -hmm. And I noticed that as they passed by my car, as we passed by each other, that they had some blinders on. Yeah. And yeah. the blinders, you see, are intended to situate you that you might be able to yes, keep sir. your focus. Amen, somebody. Blinders situate you that you can't look around and see sister girl that ain't singing or brother man that ain't singing. Yes, 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 yes. Listen, you know, sometimes we have to ask God, can, let me 
Let me stir, let me slow down, let me slow down. I got, I got a few minutes, I got a few minutes. Let me, let me, let me do a baby like this. It reminds me of a story, of a story that was told. You know, sometimes it's good to ask questions. Matter of fact, every now and again, I tell the saints it would be good without me having to die. I got to qualify. It would be good to be able to sit down and talk to God. I, I know what you're thinking. But brother, see, it's all in the Word. It's all in the Word. I understand that. But, but I would like to be able to sit down and just ask the Lord about some specific things about me and about what I'm doing. Right. I, I would like to be able to have a conference, but I just ain't ready to die yet. Amen, somebody. But, but, but listen to me. Okay, okay. But let me give it to you like this. The story is told of a man that was asking God some questions about his wife. He said, God, See, you got to be careful. Let me just say this. You got to be careful about the questions that you ask. Just thought I'd let that sink in. He said, God, my wife, why'd you make her so patient? God responded to the man so that she would love you. He said, God, why did you make her so kind? God responded again so that she would love you. He said, oh, okay. God, why did you make her so beautiful? God again said, so that you would love her. You know, sometimes we kind of build it up to what you really want to ask. He got on the nerve and said, God, why did you make her so dumb? God looked at the man and responded so that she would love you. Listen, 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 listen. If it wasn't for love, the Bible says that love covers a multitude of sins. Amen, somebody. You know what I mean? I'm so glad that God loves me because I've had some dumb times in my life. I don't know about anybody else in here. I've done some stuff that I know I shouldn't have done. Amen, somebody. And, and I'm so glad that God loves me in spite of me. Amen, somebody. If it wasn't for the love of God, I don't know what I would do. Amen. But, but listen, 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 listen. That does something to me in terms of my spirit when it comes to other folk. That does something to me. See, when I know what the Lord has delivered me from, it helps me to keep from looking down or being critical of somebody else that is going through some things that God delivered me through. Amen, somebody. version of it. Y'all know it's John chapter 3 and verse number 16. The Bible says that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Remember that the Bible says that God so loved the world. I'm glad he loved the world enough that he would give his only begotten son. But if that had been me, if that had been me, if that had been me, I got three boys. Y'all might have been in trouble in this. <laughs> But listen, 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 listen. Let me, let me get fun. Let me get fun. Let me get fun. The call down of God ought to know it and show it. Yes, yeah. You can't show what you don't know. Yeah. The Bible continues to encourage us to know that we might be able to show. Here, not only am I saying tonight that we have to be able to know in order to show, but we need to be able to avoid being undercover Christians. Amen. I work as a chaplain for the Fort Wayne Police Department. There are times and occasions that I meet different persons that are employed by the police department. Some of the folk that I've met that are employed by the police department or undercover police officers. And so what I've come to know is there are times then when I meet them on the street, we can greet and have an exchange with each other because nobody wants the chaplain for the Fort Wayne Police Department to acknowledge them if they're in the middle of something. 
I ain't messing, I ain't, I ain't lost my place. Watch it, stay with me, stay with me, just stay with me, just stay with me. As members of the body of Christ, we cannot afford to be undercover Christians. We can't be folk that just come in on Sunday and shout hallelujah. Amen, somebody. Somebody ought to be able to see some Jesus in us for every day of our lives. We ought to not have to say anything to anybody for them to be able to see that we belong to Jesus Christ. We ought to be folk that when we see each other in the street, we can not only greet each other, we can love each other, we can hug each other, we can act like members of the body of Christ, because we not undercover, amen, tonight. We're not trying to keep nothing secret. As a matter of fact, if you understand the text of Matthew chapter 5, the Bible says, let your light so shine. Look, look, touch your neighbor and tell them some stuff we want other folk to see. He's so proud of being a bodybuilder that he takes every now and again and puts some pictures on himself, of himself, in his bodybuilding competition on Facebook. Because not only does he want people to see it, but he wants the world to see it. Ooh, I wonder how many of us is like that as far as our Christianity is concerned. How many of us are so proud of being members of the body of Christ that you'll get on Facebook and let the whole world know that I am a child of God. Amen, somebody. I am something special. I am something different. And you don't mind. Show them. Show them what you're talking about. <laughs> uh, yeah. That comes from 1 Peter chapter 2. That comes from verse number 4 through verse number 10 of 1 Peter chapter 2. If you'll meet me there, and I'll show you like this how the Bible reads in that place. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse number 4 to verse number 10. The Bible says to whom, matter of fact, let me, let, me, let, me, let me read it. Let me read it from the American Standard Version. The Bible says, Unto whom coming a living stone rejected indeed of men, but with God elect precious, ye also as living stones are built up a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood to offer up a spiritual sacrifice as acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Because it is contained in Scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect precious, and he that believes on him shall not be put to shame. For you therefore that believe is the preciousness, but for such as the disbelieve, the stone which the builders rejected, the same was made the head of the corner, and of a stone of stumbling, and a rock of offense. For they stumbled at the word, being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. Listen to verse number, listen to this next verse especially. Listen to this one, let me enlarge that just a little bit, just a little bit, so I don't miss this. But ye are, touch a neighbor and tell them, look where I am. Touch your neighbor, tell them, look at what I am. The Bible says, but ye are a elect race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for God's own possession, that ye may show forth the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Did you, did you hear that? Touch your neighbor, tell them you ought to show it all over the place. Touch your neighbor, tell them you ought to show it all over the place. Because he says, look, he says, he says, he says, now what God wants you to do is show forth the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. They ought to see some show us stuff in us. We are only, we are not only those that have been called out, but somebody ought to see in us enough that they want to be like us. Oh, okay, you're not feeling that like that. First Corinthians chapter 11, I hear verse number one. I believe the apostle Paul would say, follow me as I follow Christ. Now, follow, if I remember properly, from the words in which it's translated, the term there uh, is imitate. Yes, sir. 
to imitate, imitate, imitate. So what he's saying is, it's all right to imitate me as long as I'm imitating Jesus Christ. Amen, somebody. See, somebody ought to want to be like you. Amen, somebody. Somebody ought to want to be like you because you are like Jesus Christ. So when they see you, they ought to see the Jesus in you that says to them, I want to be like. See, see, I understood it. I understood it. what Charles Barkley was trying to say in terms of his rejection of Michael Jordan. But I still feel Barkley had it wrong. Because folk gonna look at you. Folk gonna check out your life. See, our lives, our conversation, the King James also often uses, our manner of life ought to be such that folk can be just like yes, sir. us. You ought to be thankful when somebody wants to be like you. I tell you, for me to try and live like Christ, and nobody ever want to be like me, want to follow me, want to listen to me, I'm in a world of trouble. Amen, somebody. Yeah. If don't nobody want to hear what I'm saying as a gospel preacher, you know right now I'm in trouble. Amen, somebody. I remember and love the idea that the Apostle Paul said to his young church, Timothy, to preach the word. Be as an in season and out of season. He said, reprove and rebuke and restore with all long suffering and doctrine for the time will come. See, sometimes folks don't want to hear what you got to say. Right. But you still got to give it to them anyway. What, what am I saying? What am I saying? Listen, as we live the life of a Christian, sometimes folk oh, really don't want to deal with you and your life and what you're doing right now. If I'm still out there doing my thing, the life that you live, the life that you live, if I'm still out there, is an indictment to the life that I live. That's what folks say things like, y'all think y'all are so much better than everybody else. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's not that we're trying to be better. It's that we're trying to be as much like God as we possibly can. Right. 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 Jesus said a long time ago, those who live godly, you're going to suffer persecution. Mm -hmm. Amen, somebody. They, 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 just, they just, you know, a lot of times what folk don't understand, they can't stand. Right. When I look back, show them what you're talking about. Christians are encouraged to be living stones, a spiritual house, of which Jesus Christ is the foundation and the founder. First Peter chapter two, verse number sixteen, six and seven. Y'all know in Matthew chapter sixteen, y'all know, y'all know that's our text at verse number eighteen. Upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against. That's our that's our text. Acts chapter twenty, and verse number twenty-eight. You know he purchased it with his own blood. You know that. You know that. That's our that's our thing. But listen to this. When you go back to 1 Peter chapter 2, the words show forth. Listen to this. Now listen to this. I can hear it sit down. The words show forth mean literally to proclaim and or to publish abroad. To proclaim and or to publish abroad. So God is saying, I want you. I want you to be seen. God is saying, I want them to see you. God wants us to be seen that they might know. We need to know in order that we can show. The wise man can be known by uh, the way that he does what he does. In James chapter 3, verse number 13, let me show you this way. I'm getting ready to sit down. James chapter 3, he says it this way. In James chapter 3, verse number uh, 13 in particular, first of all, and I can skip down to verse number 17. James says, who among you is wise and understanding? Watch this now. Let him show how so. By his good behavior, his deeds and the gentleness of wisdom. Then when you skip down to verse number 17 and 18, the Bible says, But the wisdom from above is pure, then peaceable, gentle, reasonable, full of mercy, good fruits, unwavering, and without hypocrisy. And the seed whose fruit is righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. So James says in chapter in verse number 13 of James 3 that a wise man conducts himself in a certain way. And then he says in verse number 17 and verse number 18 here is what it ought to look like in terms of his actions. But then know this that that comes from God. Mm, wisdom. A wise man. Wisdom. Wisdom is not just knowledge. But wisdom is 
knowledge used and or applied properly. See, it's not enough just to know some stuff. But then what do you do in terms of what you know and how you use what you know makes all of the difference, amen, somebody. So they ought to see in us some wise people, some folk that are possessors of wisdom. Not only do we know, but how we use what we know makes the difference between us and those that God is still trying to get to come to a better place. So not only do we need to know it, but then the text has suggested that we show it. You remember we said and have been saying that they ought to see some Jesus in us. Amen. I could parallel it for you like this in John chapter 14 verse number 7 through 9. Jesus said if you have known me you should have known my father also. From henceforth you know him and have seen him. Now Philip asked the question that any number of us probably would have asked. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father, and it's a fight with us. Show us the Father, and I'll be satisfied. Jesus has to respond to him and says quite simply, have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. Yes, and how sayest thou then, show us the Father? Wait a minute, Brother Sam, what's your point? If I can take and make application and lay it parallel to the thesis of what Jesus just shared with us. Jesus says, when you see me, you see my Father. They should be able to see us and have seen Jesus. They should see some Jesus in us every time they see us. Now listen, but if you understand that my behavior makes the difference, James chapter 3, then when I am where I am doing what I do, they ought to see in me the example that says he must be a child of God. Amen. See, see, folk understand that, that no times and occasions when folks say, I, what church do you go to? Or when you get in that conversation in that group and they ask you, will you ask the church to pray for me? You ought to be the one that they look to, that they ask for, because there's something about it that stands out from everybody else. We are a peculiar people. We are a royal priesthood. And God did that intentionally because you're not supposed to be like every, I got to stop, but I heard Paul in Ephesians chapter 5 say, I'm coming back to get the church. And he says, I'm coming back to get it without spot, wrinkle, or blemish. Yeah. See, look, 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 come here, come here. I'm, I'm, I'm taking my seat. Let me, let, me, let, me, let me do it like that. When I got ready to get married, one thing that I didn't want is somebody that nobody else wanted. <laughs> <laughs> I know y'all talking about me right now. How you gonna say all of that? Sitting up there with that cave, gave me somebody. Listen, listen, <laughs> look, uh, look, since this is ain't here, you know, it's, it's just between us. We can talk about this. Listen, I, I tell that girl, you know, it was, it was, it was never quite a six pack, amen, somebody, but, but it, ain't, it wasn't all this. <laughs> but, but, but still, still, I had my standards, amen, somebody. Wait a minute, Russell, you, you, you were doing all right till you got here. Let me take my seat like this, like this. Look, look, Jesus says when he comes back, he's coming back for the church without spot, wrinkle, or blemish. It deals with the idea that when one takes a bride to present her to his father, he's not taking just anything. When you take your bride home to meet your prospective bride, your prospective husband home to meet your parents, it ought to be something about them that you don't mind saying, Mom, he the one. Amen, somebody. Look, 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 look. If you got to sneak around and duck and dodge and cover under cover and hide and pretend like y'all ain't been together, he might not be the one for you. Amen, somebody. Look, look, look. If he's cussing and clowning and shooting and poking, amen, somebody, he might not be the one. Doc, 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 doc. If her blouse is down to here and cut up to there, she might not be the one. Amen, somebody. It ought to be somebody that you can take home to mama and say, Mama, this is the one. What am I saying? They ought to see some Jesus in us that says, them about uh, he's not like everybody else. He is the one. We ought to be able to, they ought to be able to, they ought to be able. They ought to be able to see some Jesus in us. But before you can show it, you're going to show up have to know it. I'm just plainly suggesting that we preach the word, that we study the word. And by that, shall we know. I close like this. A husband stepped on one of those penny scales. I, I try.
try as best I can to be truthful in what I do. How many of y'all work on being truthful? Ooh, ain't too many hands going up somewhere. Jesus, we need some Jesus all up in here to bring that in. Listen, try and be as truthful as we possibly can when we do what we do. A husband stepped on one of those penny scales that tell you a fortune and weight. When you drop me in a coin, y'all for me with those. He turns to his wife and says, listen to this. Show her a small white card. It says I'm energetic, bright, resourceful, and a great husband. His wife looked at him and said, yeah. As she nodded, it had your weight wrong too. <laughs> us ought to be the truth about us. If you're the child of God, you profess to be. You ain't got to say nothing to nobody. It ought to be seen in what you do. Show it when you show it. Show it by knowing. God bless you.